Well, good morning, guys. We're back building this houseboat. We were challenged by Zach Fowler over at Fowler's Makery and Mischief on to build a houseboat. And if I didn't do a good version of it, and then, uh, and then totally blasting mine out of the water, battleship style, I was like, this is pretty fast. I don't need to really go faster than this. Ha <laughs> ha! Solar powered tiny houseboat. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. This is the second installment. We've already had uh, the first part of the build where we put the top on. If you guys haven't checked that out, you guys can check that out. The link will be down below for the first part of the houseboat build. But uh, if you're just joining us, I'll just give you a quick recap on this thing. We first started off with an old little tiny houseboat because it's going to be the world's smallest houseboat. And what we did was we actually framed it all up with some scrap two by twos and then skinned it out with some underlayment or some Luon and then we put a roof on it and then added some styrofoam for some insulation, popped a couple of holes in it for some windows and uh, that's pretty much where we're at. Oh yeah, we did test it out on the water just to make sure it floats and it was pretty much balanced. So we've taken the information we got from the last episode and we've kind of rethought a couple of things and uh, adjusted our plans slightly because that's kind of what this build is all about learning as we go to ensure that we have a very comfortable houseboat when we're done. And uh, the main priority is that it floats and it, it doesn't tip over. So we've learned a lot. And uh, anyways, we're gonna get started on continuing finishing the houseboat on this episode. So uh, let's get started. All right, first order today is we're waterproofing our roof. The original plan on this roof was to uh, put some blue skin on the seams but uh, I've kind of decided against that. And the reason being is because blue skin is heavy. We're gonna try to lighten this bad boy up. We're gonna try to ensure she's not quite top heavy. So what we're instead using is uh, sheeting tape or tuck tape. And if any of you guys have ever worked with tuck tape, it's, it's permanent tape. This stuff does not come off. It is extremely waterproof and durable. Now the original plan last episode was to put a, uh, a heavy gauge kind of a bubble building tarp on this thing. We're not going to do that either because again, it is heavy and we're trying to go for light. So what I've opted instead is a, uh, a tarp, a tarpaulin. I don't know if they, they call it a tarpaulin. Tarpaulin. It's a tarpaulin. Is that really, that's how you pronounce that? I don't know, somebody will tell us how to pronounce that. A tarpaulin, 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 tarpaulin. That's really, that's how you say that? Anyways, we're going to put a tarp. We're gonna put a tarp on top of here and uh, what's going to be really cool about that is it's a brown tarp and uh, it'll probably help uh, during duck hunting season. Our original plan was to do white tarp, but white always looks dirty after a little while. So brown will make it so it's not quite as dirty looking and it'll also help us camouflage the boat during duck hunting season. How's that for a beautiful roof? Look how it's got a shine to it and everything. I like it. I like it already. We can, uh, I imagine the wrinkles will, uh, will unwrinkle over time as opposed to, you know, wrinkling over time. I like it. Looks good. I'm putting uh, foam. What is this called? Foil? Radiant uh, foil? Radiant foil to foam. It's got little bubbles. It's got bubbles. So, yeah. So, I'm putting it on the inside to... Um, to give it a little more um, insulation value. Nice. So the idea behind this stuff is the uh, the foil will radiate the heat that we create back into the building and then give us a little bit of an airspace. Space foil, it's like NASA. They would use this on the space shuttle, I imagine. Tin, tin out. out. It is now tin out. Tin out and we got some radiant barriers. So Don's gonna be working on that all the way around. We're not gonna do the ceiling because the ceiling has uh, foam on it. So we got that. So that should keep us nice and toasty once that's all together. All right, well, I've slept on it and I've thought about it and I think I've come up with a plan on how to make my houseboat less like a cork bobbing in water and more like a habitable space where you don't feel like you're gonna die. This is the plan. So as you can see, we have our boat here and as it sits now, it goes like this when you go to the side. So I'm thinking, of making it a little bit more stable. And the way I'm thinking of doing it is kind of mimicking nature. And if you've ever seen a water strider, it looks like a, uh, it looks like a spider on water. It's got like these outriggers off to the side 
and it, it's very stable. It actually sits on the on the water, the surface tension of the water, mm. and it uh, it runs across the water or swims or something like that. But it's very stable. It doesn't seem to be tipping over. Anytime I've ever seen them, they don't appear to be tipping over. So I'm going to mimic the water strider and uh, and putting outriggers on the boat. So the plan is to take some sort of steel and make sort of like an arm that goes across the back of the boat and then come over here to the middle of the boat and then out like this. And then what you're gonna see, so it comes out like this, like that, and then there's going to be some sort of a outrigger on both sides, like that. Can you see that? And these guys, the idea behind these guys is it won't allow the boat to tip over. If that doesn't work, what we can do is we can always add another set of stabilizers and put it more like a water strider. Did I do that? There. So it can look like a complete water strider. Anyways, let's, uh, let's get some metal all cut up and uh, let's start fabricating this guy. This video is sponsored by EcoFlow Delta Pro, one of the largest batteries in the EcoFlow ecosystem. The EcoFlow Delta Pro has one of the highest storage capacities for any home battery. And what's great about it is it's scalable. It starts at 3.6 kilowatt hours and it ranges all the way up to 25 kilowatt hours if you want to scale it to run stuff longer. What's more, it has a 3600 watt AC inverter. So it powers about 99% of all household devices. One of the other crazy features about this pack is it has the multi-charge feature, which allows you to charge 6,500 watts simultaneously. It's the fastest charging on the planet. If you're just starting on your home power storage solutions, this is a great power pack to purchase. The EcoFlow Delta Pro is so scalable, so you can add more packs, you can integrate it to the EcoFlow ecosystem, so you can integrate your home power needs. It's basically live without limits. I've talked a lot about the EcoFlow's product in the past, and the reason is, is because I really like their products. I like the way they're designed, I like the way they're laid out, I like usability and the features that come with it. This thing here, the EcoFlow Delta Pro, can truly do whatever you can throw at it. I've been welding with this thing. I've had it charge multiple devices. The thing is, is you can charge, you can plug in up to 15 devices simultaneously on this thing. I'll give you a little tour. So this up here is your USB ports. You got USB-A, USB-C for your high drain USB devices. It has a high powered inverter, so all your 120 voltage devices. It also has a 30 amp port. And if you guys with the campers out there that have the 30 amp plug-in, that's for you guys. And the great thing about it is it's, it's portable. So you can bring it from vehicle to vehicle. It's not locked into a specific system. It has a nice long handle, so you can cart it like a piece of luggage. It has some high strength wheels at the back, so you can roll it on pretty much any terrain. I've been lugging this thing through the forest. What's more about the EcoFlow Delta Pro, it has a number of ways to charge. You can charge it through your AC at home. You can charge it through solar panels that you can purchase through their website. You can also charge it through your DC port on your car. So you're never left without a, a way to charge this thing. I think one thing that the battery people don't talk about is 240 voltage. Well, with the EcoFlow Delta Pro, you can get 240. All you have to do is get two of these packs Using the hub, you can actually get 240 voltage. Say you need to run your oven, you can do that. And did I mention it's fast? If you're anything like me and you need absolute quiet to sleep and you don't want a noisy gas generator running, you can charge this thing to 80% in just one hour. So you fire up your generator if you're off grid, you charge this thing one hour, you shut your gas powered down and you've got quiet sleeping. If you guys are in the market for any of the EcoFlow Systems products right now, as we speak during the Black Friday sale, they have up to 50% off all EcoFlow's products. Maybe the EcoFlow Delta Pro is a little too big for you and you want something smaller. Check out their web store right now as we speak and you can check out all the deals they have offered. Click the link in the description below and you can go to their website and find the product that suits your needs from now until November 28th. All right, as it turns out, the boat is not square. It is a little bent, so I've uh, re-welded that seam there that I just kind of tacked because I broke it when I tried to bend it. So the plan now is to uh, give it a little bit more of a bend in order to have it kind of sit along the boat evenly. 
What you doing there, Don? I'm cutting a bed sheet. <laughs> okay. So the plan, the plan, I told Don, I was like, have you ever done upholstery before? He's like, no. Well, another thing off his bucket list. The plan with this bed sheet, this king size royal blue bed sheet, is to line the panels of the inside of the boat to give us more of a warm, cozy feeling. The foam inlaid so that'll keep us nice and toasty and now we just got to make it look pretty. And we're always kind of erring on the side of we want light material as in weight wise because we don't want to make this thing top heavy. But I think it's going to look very nice with the royal blue, very regal. We're going to talk boat building 101. It's kind of hard to say boat building, but I just did it right on the third try. Okay, so we're doing boat building 101 and I've done some research on outriggers and uh, how they build them and whatnot and uh, closest I've come is uh, how they build catamarans. Now a catamaran kind of looks like three boats side by side. The keel and the outrigger are even in the water, meaning most stable and I believe to be the most efficient in correspondence with drag and whatnot. So what I'm planning on doing is trying to make this guy here even or slightly above the keel. So when the keel of the boat is sitting in the water, the outrigger is slightly in the water just to uh, kind of afford stability in the end. I have these guys laying around. These are, uh, they used to have a little, I just ground it off. It's, uh, it's a support for one of those giant tube slides. I figure it's a perfect kind of bracket to go around my barrel that will support it. I just got to shape it slightly to go around. All right, it's got to bend this more and then weld it in place. All right, we got it all fabbed up. We're going to give her just a little test fit. So that's what I've come up with. And that I will ratchet strap around the barrel in order to uh, come off when it needs to for easy transportation. So the idea is to slide it into this little groove here and to sit on top of that. Some stuff we gotta do before we gotta do some other stuff. And uh, if any time you can make your life a little bit easier, uh, I suggest doing it. So the plan today is to kind of stain our uprights in order to uh, not have to do it afterwards because we're doing fabric on the, uh, on most of the walls and try to stain next to fabric. That's just kind of recipe for disaster. You end up getting stain all over the place. That's why they invented paint tees, I think. There we go. So I'm making a custom color stain and I'm gonna be adding black and gray together to give myself some sort of a blacky gray finish. And this is a wiping stain. So what you do is you put it on with the brush and then you wipe it off with a cloth to your desired color. You leave it on longer, it tends to soak in and make it a little bit darker. In my previous life, I used to do this on staircases and banisters and stuff. I didn't like doing it then. One part kind of polyurethane and stain at the same time. It doesn't work well. And it kind of looks like you sharpie your banister. At least with this stuff, if you, if you kind of got it the wrong color, you can always add more stain. Gonna give me a gray, a gray black kind of color. And that's gonna go well with my dark blue walls. Tip for you guys staining for the first time. Take your rags and put them outside, lay them out. They catch fire in a bucket. All right, just like that, we've got the stain all done on the inside. I'm just gonna let that dry up a little bit and uh, before I put my fabric on. And meanwhile, I'm going to actually work on the doors. My original plan was to actually make these insulated doors and then I changed to not make them insulated. And then I went back to insulated. So what I have to do is make a little bit of a frame. So I've got uh, Don actually milled these guys up. This is uh, Eastern white cedar, so it's nice and light. And I'm gonna tack them onto there and that gives me a place to put my, my bubble wrap insulation in the doors to give myself a little bit of thermal break and that'll give a little bit of depth. What are you working on, Don? I'm working on a cubic mini stove. Cool. I'm putting together the stand. It's a freestanding stove. This is our first time having a freestanding stove, so it's got a little pedestal on it. That's kind of neat. These guys, uh, link will be down in the description for these guys. These are the mini cubic wood stoves. They're the smallest stove I've ever seen, and they're designed as a marine grade 
wood stove. Everything about this thing is neat. The dampers, front damper, rear damper. My plan is to take these pieces of fabric that Don has meticulously cut and put them right here. As we go with little strips of wood that we've pre-cut and it should just give us a nice, soft, even interior. Give it a whirl anyways. Well, I think that turned out pretty slick. What do you guys think? You can see the wall panels, they're, they're coming along. We got our roof, we got a roof detail, ceiling detail we're gonna put in there. We have some uh, ambient light we wanna put in there. It's coming right along, I like it. I like it, it's very, very cozy, very homey. It's exterior weather guard, so it should hold up pretty good. So Donnie dropped by and he's having a look at my boat. He's a, he's a, you're an authentic East Coaster. You live on the coast, you lived on the coast of the Atlantic. You got it. All right. So he's familiar with boats and how boats work. They, they float in theory, right? Yeah. But some of them sink that we won't talk about the sinking boats, but this, do you think this thing's going to float? Well, it's a, like it's a fiberglass base. So, and it looks like you're uh, using pretty light materials. You got a, Outrigger going on the sides. Yeah. I'm sure there's going to be another one on the other side. So Frankie thinks it's good. What do you think, Frankie? Good, Frankie. Yeah, Frankie's like, oh yeah, that's good. Good boat. Yeah. So that's, uh, this is our progress so far. You can see we got, uh, we got in our, our, our fabric on the outside. She's shaping up. We got some inside finishing to do. I want this thing to be something reminiscent of a luxury yacht at bargain basement pricing. So I went to Princess Auto and I got myself, it's an indoor, outdoor rope light. I'm a big fan of these things. I'm a big fan of accent lighting because I think lighting makes the space pop. Before I put the ceiling on this thing, before I put the roof on this thing, I actually drilled a bunch of access holes in the top here to fish myself a, uh, an LED rope light around here to give my ceiling a glow. All right, so there we go. Indoor, outdoor, it is waterproof. Uh, I always recommend testing them before you install them, but uh, there you go. Create sort of a valance to, to hide the wires, the ugliness. It's like mounting a, a wall hung TV. You don't wanna be able to see the wires when you're done. So yeah, I should be able to do this lickety split. Shouldn't be that long. And what's great about it is it's got tiny, tiny little wires. So you'll be able to tuck everything in. My original plan was to make some sort of a flip up canopy. And now that I've come to think of it, I can't really do that because if it flips up here, it's going to hit my chimney. Not to mention it, uh, it's hard to put a hinge on a curved surface. What I've come up with is this thing. This is a aluminum rod that I'm laying around. It's uh, one of those tower shelves you got from Ikea. It used to be like this and there was an adjustable thing. And uh, what I like about it is it's really light. So what we did was we took a piece of metal and we cut it up and we put a, uh, a pin through it to allow it to go and then not shoot out this way. So it stays like that. And then we can put our canopy or cloth canopy or even a plastic canopy above our cooking area for inclement weather. And then the piece de resistance is the center post which you just kind of push in there and then you can have a place to extend it if you need a clothesline or if you want to hey hang your flag that's pretty neat in order to build my light fixture i took some old luon that we had laying around i cut it into a rectangle pattern i drilled a hole in the middle of it to accommodate my pot light which is a slim fit pot light and then i used some cedar to trim it out glued it in place and then added a couple of staples in order to hold it in place. And then once that's done, I'm gonna hang it from the ceiling in the boat. It's finally time. It's finally time to figure out where this thing goes. Oh, that's beautiful right there. I don't even think I have to figure out where this thing goes. I think it's front and center right, right there. So this is the cubic mini stove. This is the cub version of it. And uh, it's gonna be the heating source for this little boat. I want to, we're gonna secure it to the floor because we don't want it to rock. It's actually going to uh, help me balance the boat a lot because 
the idea is to have my bed right about here and then have my, my stove right here and all my amenities. So I weigh about, I don't know, 150 pounds. And uh, so my idea is to kind of fill the stoves with, with firewood in order to uh, kind of balance it out. This thing weighs probably about 20 pounds, roughly. So uh, plus the pipe and all that stuff. So it should be pretty even once everything's said and done. It's gonna be super convenient too, cause it's very uh, centrally located. Like you can like lay down and you got the stove. I think that's actually, that's gonna be perfect right there. Cool. I think I'm gonna nip actually the, uh, a little bit of the stand off to get it set back a little bit more. But otherwise I think that's pretty ideal right there. Lots of clearances on all sides. It's gonna look awesome. Before I permanently mount the stove, I gotta take the opportunity to cut my holes in the floor because I wanna get my flooring in before I get my stove sitting on it because I don't wanna to have to cut around my stove and I want everything to be seamless. So I've marked out my access holes in my floor, which is gonna be my stowaway compartments for firewood and uh, anything really. You can just hide stuff in the floor of the boat. So that's what I'm gonna do now is cut these out and then make them so they just pop out so you can get inside. <laughs> These are like the easiest floors ever. So comfy, just rocking on the water. Oh, nap time. I figure it's the end of the day. I might as well take the opportunity once all the dust is settled to give this thing its proper paint job. I started with the back doors. I painted them nice blue color, kind of like what I did inside. I figured the plywood isn't the greatest looking. So I uh, freshened it up, kind of evenly coated it, coated the hinges as well. And then I took the opportunity to give it a nice coat of marine varnish on the outside to really bring out the grain in my wood. Uh, I started by cutting in all of the edges with my brush and then I rolled it out with a microfiber roller and then I took my brush again and kind of evened out all of the roller marks to give myself a nice even finish. And when this is dry, what I'll do is I'll give it a light sanding and then another couple of coats of marine varnish just to make sure it stands the test of time. As it turns out, it's not great to leave this stuff outside. I've got itty bitty pieces come off, dime size protective coating. Oh, what did you do all day again? Oh, I picked little pieces of plastic off. Just little tiny pieces of plastic. Well, as much as I can get off, the much patience I have today, it's kind of like a mix between picking a scab and a fidget spinner. You can't really get it off. You kind of get a chunk and then it goes for a little bit and then it breaks off. So I'm going to install it and uh, yeah, maybe that'll make it easier to pull off at some point. I also had to notch the top to fit around the curvature of the bow. So that the plan there is to get that in there. In order to build my front curved window, I first started off with a piece of Lexan I had laying around and then I measured it to size and then I carefully cut it with the grinder and then I half installed it and then trimmed it a little bit more to fit the contours of my opening. And then once that was done, I took the piece of Lexan, I peeled off the protective coating bit by painstaking bit and I couldn't get it all. So I just left it because I was getting a little frustrated and then I installed it using self-tapping screws but first I drilled the holes to ensure that my Lexan wouldn't crack and then once that was done I used some cedar trim that I had left over to give us a nice little build out and then I installed the curved piece at the top to finish off the front window. Well how is that for front window? It's impact resistant. It's going to seal up the indoor cabin quite nicely. 
as you guys can see, I didn't quite get all the protective coating off, but that's kind of like a, that's kind of like a Sunday afternoon job when you're bored. As you can see, it's extremely stuck on there. So it's going to take a little bit of effort. I was, I was taking like little pieces. I think real time on uh, removal of the stuck pieces was about an hour and a half before I said, you know what, I I'm going to lose my mind. It is way stuck, but I think I can get it off given enough, uh, enough Sundays. I already have a, uh, my first scratch on the window. That's from the inside, probably from storing it for 10 years. But uh, yeah, you always get the first scratch. It's like buying a new car, right? You get the first scratch out of the way and then you don't really notice them. All right, I got one piece of Lexan left. This, well, so I got another little chunk, but this is the, see that? Ah. Anyways, <laughs> I got a chunk of Lexan left. This will probably give me enough to do two porthole windows. I kind of want them long. Is a porthole window has have to be circle or could it be oblong? Mm. I'm gonna make an oblong porthole window here, but first I have to make a gasket in order to uh, hold my material on the inside. And then I'll inlay this piece of Lexan, maybe get the wife to carefully peel off the stuff. Uh, so, so fresh. Oh, this actually, this piece seems to be coming off easier than every other. Yeah, it's still like 10% of it's still gonna be on there. Oh well, let her do that. Uh, <laughs> here, Rachel, have this evening to peel this stuff off. Anyways, I gotta make the template. We're gonna cut that thing open and uh, we're gonna get our portholes because we wanna be able to see out the back while we're inside the cabin without having to open the door. So the plan now is to take these uh, brackets that I made and actually cut a hole into the door to give myself a little porthole so I can see out the back. So what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna Kind of figure out the middle. So the idea behind doing this is that we're going to prevent our material and whatnot from, from breaking. Because we want to be able to cut the inside of it, screw our uh, Lexan in from the outside and give us a nice sealed porthole that way. And mount the other side and uh, cut them both at the same time. Because if you're gonna fail, fail quickly. And there you go, you got your porthole. And the idea behind these guys is I'm not gonna put any sort of trim around it, but I'm gonna put a bead of silicone on the inside, some clear silicone to seal it up, which just seals up my end grain on my plywood and then any drafts that will come in the window. But uh, I think that turned out pretty good. I'll put some more screws in it, but you guys get the gist of it. Just gotta do the other side and then we're good. But if you're looking at it from afar, it'll just look seamless all the way across because it'll blend and reflect. Well, the left side looks a little bit better than the right side because this is what I did first and this one I did second. That's why it's always a good idea to help your buddy finish his basement first so you can learn from your mistakes and improve upon them. I should have put these on before I put the window in. It holds my door in place. So I can, so the door and the wind doesn't catch it and hit you in the face with the door. You lock it in. It's good to work on the door too. It doesn't push out. There, latch. Out of the way, in the hole. Cheap, easy solution. I realized that this should probably be on the outside, but how would I ever close it? Because it's got the uh, it's got the latch on the inside. It's my boat. I'm gonna do what I want to. I'm gonna put this on the inside. And I feel that. The stove combined with the window, which is all brass and glass, will kind of counteract the fact that I'm gonna be laying on this side. So it'll be more evenly balanced. I've rethought it. I'm gonna screw it in all from the inside. I didn't think it enough. <laughs> How am I gonna get that to stay there while I tuck it underneath? Hmm. I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of a learning lesson because you guys can learn from what I've done for what not to do. I use some of this stuff. Goof off, the magical, no, the miracle remover. I had it laying around, it's uh, like graffiti remover. Sounds like it can remove plastic. Well, it um, looks like I put a little bit of snow feature on, on, my, uh, on my window that it is not, not coming off. I've, I've, 
I wrecked my window. <sighs> and then I was like, well, let's go full bore and uh, let's see if lacquer thin air will remove it. And that doesn't work either. That, um, you can see it kind of, uh, kind of solidified the wreckingness, if that's a word. I have wrecked my beautiful front window. <sighs> there was a half a sheet left. I don't know if it's big enough but uh, I'm already into this window for like, I don't know, going on like three, four hours, just removing the, uh, the plastic that I can't all remove. Maybe the neck, the other side will remove easier. I don't know. <sighs> well, at least I got a template, right? I can use this one as a template to make the new one. Didn't have a solution for you if you tried everything. Put some gasoline on it, burn it off. I, well, that's what that graffiti remover does, <laughs> but it etches the thing. You just don't leave it in the backyard unattended for thousands of years. <laughs> Nature wants it back. Well, you just gotta... Making the plastic dirty. Wow. The more you pull, the worse it gets. Maybe I just gotta go real slow. We've got like, uh, like many, 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 many hours of this. I'll let, I'll let Chris do that. Burn it off. Doesn't work. Tried it. <laughs> Gasoline and just... Whoosh. Like that'll eat it. Ethanol. Well, we gotta get her. We need a clear view. And really, this backing on this Lexan stuff shouldn't be as stuck as it is. There's no no reason for that. The other side came off fine. This side is not coming off very well at all. I've kind of, yeah. Got the snowy. It's all ready for Christmas. I took some foam I had left over and made a custom, custom size bed that's gonna fit right here. That'll be perfect. I'm just going to put the irregular sheet on. Just tuck it in, tuck it around. And what's good about this bed is it's pretty light. So when you don't want it, you just kind of just flip it up. And you got all your room for activities. I was at uh, Cabela's Bass Pro Shops the other day and uh, I was looking at their clearance area and they had some uh, bedding. Who knew Bass Pro had bedding? So that's what I got, this Coleman blanket. It's like the fluffiest blanket I've ever seen. And that thing will double up. You can actually make like a back, get your backrest up there to sit right in the bow of the boat and look out, just bob around. And then I was like, I need some color. So I got some red. There's another little Bass Pro Cabela find. That looks cozy already. I just want to go have a nap. We got the majority of the boat completed. I think we're going to do a little bit of odds and sods, the old punch list on the next episode in order to uh, button up all the hatches and whatnot. Because, uh, yeah, there's still a little bit left to do, but uh, those are going to have to wait. We got to pick the plastic off the new window because, uh, oops. But, uh, yeah, we got we to gotta button up all those loose ends in order to set sail on the next episode and uh big shout out big thank you to ecoflow delta pro for sponsoring this video be sure to check out their black friday sales it's the best time to get an ecoflow of any variety so check their website the link is down in the description below but uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, join me on the next one where we actually take this thing this houseboat and go out on the water it'll be much better when i'm looking at the water and the sky and the birds and seagulls and stuff and not the inside of my shop because well as much as I like the inside of my shop oh yeah I didn't forget but I forgot to mention we're also going to work on propulsion the next episode I've got a heck of a crazy idea for uh driving this thing powering this boat so uh you're gonna have to find out next time so be sure to tune in